Hi guys, as promised before, this is a quick overview about how I achieved my Celsius look with Redshift with no post process at all. As always, my name is Christoph Des, and I welcome you to this uh, very short video this time. Um, before we go further, uh, let me mention yes, this video is free since it's on YouTube, but feel free to go on my Gumroad and buy some of those nice items. The reason why I ask you that is just for you to be generous, not toward me. But generally, I tend to use the found that I get from my video to buy food for the homeless through the month. Um, believe me, don't believe me, I don't care. That's what I do. Uh, if you don't want to give me money, then just pay it forward and um, just buy homeless guy a sandwich. It will pay off for my video. Anyway, um, yeah, my Gumroad is here, Gumroad Extreme 3D. Anyway, let's move forward. Forget that. So, what do I do to achieve that effect? First, I start with creating and rendering, tune, and assign an outline. It's a PFX, right? I will not do it now since I did already create one. Assign outline. So, the next step, which is very important, is to transfer that outline to Polygon. And basically there, we are done for the outline. Let's look at what it looks like first. A little bit of IP air. Sending to the card. And it's there. Let me try to change the size a little bit. We will have to change the color. So, what happened is that I tell Maya to render the PFX as a polygon. Transfer them to a polygon. And uh, now, Redshift can render it, obviously. So let's uh, grab them here. I don't get one to one exactly what the PFX is giving me in Maya, but it's close enough that I can live with it. Um, here, change to, it's a bit slow right now because it's a lot of polygon to render, but I'm actually recording at the same time. Um, let's see, shall I need to more into the attribute editor. Let's change the color of the surface shader to something more, Hmm. Let's go to color balance and uh, default color to color gain here. Perfect. And we'll just make it uh, red just for the purpose of demonstration. Maybe even go more like uh, here just to make sure that you can see uh, the outline. So now I can still go into my PFX. And I can still change those values here. Look, I'm going to put two. Why? Because the polygon is still connected to the PFX. Now you see those lines become wider here and they will update in Redshift. So, which they just did. Obviously, that number is way too high. Let's go uh, back to uh, point uh, one, maybe. So, the next stuff that I need is also to define the look of the cell shader is through the texture. So you can see here, I have a kind of um, gradient effect, which is not as good as the one I will get straight up from Maya, but it's kind of do the trick. Uh, let's look at what we are doing. Window rendering hypershade. Let's have a look at my hypershade. Let me make it smaller. So in here and let's look at the material what do i do with the material well super simple i use a simpler info i plug the let's see let's grab it from here i plug the facing ratio into the v coordinate do i plug them the v coordinate correct so, and after that, I have a gradient or ramp, as Maya like to call it. See, I got those three color. I can choose whatever color I want. I can even make them um, change the interpolation between them to linear, maybe, to get a smoother effect. Linear, now if we look there, it look a lot less like uh, cell shader, like art shader, but let's go back to uh, none. Way better. And uh, what do I do with my ramp? Well, 
I just layer it on a layer texture with the multiply and I plug that into my diffuse color in Redshift. What else? Well, a little bit more. Let's go in camera. Let's look at what I do next year and turn them off. So first I have a bokeh effect. I don't really need the bokeh effect for the depth of field that it procured me, but I use it to get uh, a good chromatic aberration. Let's go here. Uh, let's go here, the aberration. Let's go remove this one. We will get a strong chromatic aberration map. Okay, those one I did download them. I don't know who did create them, but they are very good. If you are the person that did create them, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, let's turn it on and see the result of the bokeh, which also allow me to have a chromatic aberration, which you give me a subtle effect here. Maybe I could go like an iron and see what happened. See, I get it in the shadow, get it on the character. I'm not sure if I want to keep the diff of field, but we'll keep it at 25. So the next step is to turn on the photographic exposure to kind of flatten that image. It's a little bit too strong now. That's why I will put it at uh, 200, maybe 300. And um, as you can see, we are mostly done. Let's go back here to my object, which is this one. This is my PFX, surface shader, let's change the color here to something dark. So here, and I'm mostly done. Um, last stuff I want to tell you about is my lighting. I'm just using a directional light to give me a very strong and harsh shadow here. You see it in this area. And uh, now if I rotate my object, which I'm about to do, this will be very slow because my viewport is cropping out. So I did rotate my group from 45 degree. Redshift is about to update. And as you can see, all my outline are following. Why? Because my outline are basically proper geometry. Look, am I adding my, uh, my uh, group? which contain the Stormtrooper. And this is what Redshift is rendering, basically all the outline from the PFX. Anyway, I hope you did have uh, fun watching this video. I hope also that it's a bit more clear as how do I achieve that look. I generally prefer to do it with post-processing and different layer, but it was just a nice little challenge. It was fun to do, to see uh, what can I get out of uh, Redshift, especially since officially Redshift does not have any NPF feature. Quite happy with the result. It's not perfect, but uh, just for fun, it's okay. I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time. Please don't forget to either go on Magnum Road and buy something or just uh, pay it forward. And if you see a homeless guy on the street, just buy him a sandwich. You probably need it more than we do. Have a good night.